Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Bikini in the Brain, and I'm here with my lovely co-host, Ashley Kaltwasser. <laughs> <laughs> you had some boomer humor, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> what the heck is this? <laughs> I decided to switch it up. <laughs> like, I like I'm just going to use my soundboard. I just He's use, getting all the use out of it. I just want to use my soundboard. I got eight sounds. Uh, eight? <laughs> eight sounds. That's, that's it? Can yeah, you I program know. other sounds in yeah, there? I think we can other. do better. Okay. Those are so generic. I know. That's <laughs> the ones that came with the machine. How <laughs> we can get oh. Arthur. Arthur, maybe. Arthur. Kind of Arthur. Arthur's, yes. a, dude, Arthur's a tech guy. Please save us. Godsend. Save us yeah. from these generic boomer sounds. <laughs> the boomer <It's>, humor. Yeah. <laughs> That's like I feel like that's like that's the humor like somebody no I'm a, like, I'm in the millennial group did no, you know that? but I'm well I'm not saying you are a boomer <laughs> what I'm saying is that's like a dad almost the equivalent of like a dad joke. I know I'm it's kind of like I'm just prepared for one day if that happens I love dad jokes is it a, dad you know, jokes are great I didn't know that you I would like dad jokes without having kids that's a but dad that's jokes. a next yeah. thing you know you're gonna be wearing New Balances. <laughs> <laughs> and, and crew socks. <laughs> no, I don't think I'll ever lose my kicks. My kicks. Okay, style. My okay. kicks are getting a little young for me, though. That's for sure. I wear way too young of kicks. All right, Ashley, you need to focus. I need to focus. You need to focus. Hard to focus with this eye. <laughs> yes. So this episode, rightly named, with Ashley's unfocusable eye, <laughs> is finding your focus, mm -hmm. which Ashley's been doing for a better part of two years. <laughs> you know, I lose it sometimes, and then I find it kind of like that missing sock. Um, sometimes it's just stuck in the dryer in the back. <laughs> I found the focus. There it is. All right, dad, dad joke, dad joke, and you've heard this one. It's relevant with your with your uh, with your eye. Hey Ashley, did I tell you I broke up with my girlfriend with the cross eyed? Pretty sure she was seeing someone on the side. Oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> That's Perfect. <laughs> I wouldn't say cross though. That would be or the side. That, that would be the, that would op be the opposite. With the I forget how that joke goes. It goes with the side. But you don't even have that. You just, I have that. It goes in, not out. You don't but see close it close enough. No, you just can't focus. I don't see it ever. I, I don't see, see it. it. You see. I think you see it worse than it is. But it's I'm glad you can make fun of it. You know, yeah, I think of it's course. fun. It's the funnest. That's the best part. <laughs> of so talking about our uh, talking about focus here, which I think before we do that, we got some. Things to address first. Okay. Adam. Yes. Okay. Because there's a big uh, announcement we got to make. Yes, there for is. For next week. Because next week is Olympia. Next week is Olympia week. And uh, I won't be here for next week's podcast because I will be focused <laughs> on the Olympia. And I don't know if you mentioned, want to mention that you might have a special guest. Yeah, or... I'm going to, I'm, we're, I'm waiting to hear back, but we might have a guest um, in uh, well, no one could replace Ashley, but yeah, so we'll, we'll have a second best, second yeah, best substitute, substitute Ashley. Ashley yeah, substitute like a substitute teacher. I'll be yeah. wild that day. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> if no one pays attention. I'll have no focus. Yeah. The uh, yeah. So um, we may or may not have podcast next week, but yeah, we have a whole lot of things going on at the yes, prep center, and I have them all here to announce. So if you guys are going to be in Vegas, right for the Olympia weekend, um, here at the contest prep center, we have opposing. Uh, class free to anyone who's a competitor. No kids, please. Don't bring your kids. Don't bring your boyfriends either, right? <laughs> Correct. Um, and that's Monday from 1 p.m. to 2.30. Okay, me and Phoebe's going to be there. There's also a build more than just a body workshop with Celeste, and that's on Wednesday from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. And then we have open posing room Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., um, and then we have some other events too, and um, such as open gym, but it's only for team elite busy athletes. And then we have a bikini posing class on Thursday from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. If you can't make that Monday class, so um, I don't expect you guys to remember all this. So this will be on your page, right, Adam? Yep, it's already on on the, on the Instagram page elite too. Physique Instagram page. So make sure you check that out. We have a lot of fun events going on. Yeah. So you don't want to miss it. It's uh, going to be a good time. Good, yeah. good time. And Angels is going to be here and they're going to be doing something for their athletes too that are oh, doing good. the Angel. Because they're doing a how do, the fashion show at the Olympia. So the Angels yeah. fashion show at the Olympia. Mm -hmm. So they're going to be doing something here for their athletes too. 
um, <laughs> maybe the Olympia watch party as well. Ooh. And then, um, so, so you guys know, so stay tuned, stay yeah. tuned for on the gram. And I do have, you know what? I do have some exciting stuff. You know, this is funny that I'm just so we're like going off on like these other things, but it's not the topic where we're talking about focus today, which is so funny. <laughs> I think it's great, but I'm excited about it. I'm actually really excited about it. This weekend, um, was a crazy weekend. We're in here. If you come to the gym right now, the CPC, it is like half empty in the main room. And I was here with Kimber and we were just cleaning the whole gym and all the equipment we moved. A lot of the equipment is now outside because we are getting our equipment delivery on Wednesday. So we are going to have a full leg gym on, um, before the Olympia. So we're going to, if, if everything gets done, which, you know, there's a lot of stuff that could still happen. So I'm thinking it'll all be done by Sunday. We're going to also do some team workouts um, on before, like pretty much every day of the week next week at some point, but I want to make sure the equipment's done before I announce that okay. because I want to make sure, but this is going to have full leg gym inside. We're going to have outdoor workouts outside. It's going to be really fun. Um, yeah. So just, if you're a competitor, come on, you're welcome to come on down and, um, pose. Um, we ask that it's only people who are doing the posing class that are in the posing class because, you know, girls are in bikinis and stuff. So that's why we say that. But, um, you can, if you have your boyfriend or whatever, they can come and they can work out outside or yeah. work out in the other room. Um, but just not in the posing class, yeah. just because we want to give give the girls some privacy as they can have. Yeah, and you know? a little little uh, elbow room too, you know. Yeah. So we don't want to be all clustered up with all these people that aren't aren't in bikini. So yeah, you know. And yeah. then I do have one thing to announce as well. If you're finished with that part, are yeah. you okay? Um, so like I mentioned, I will be at the Olympia next week, and there's a lot of events that go on at the Olympia itself as well. So if you guys were looking to say hi to me or meet me or whatever, I will be at the Meet the Athletes event on Thursday um, at 8 p.m. And then as far as the expo, I will be at the expo on Friday, and I will be at the trifecta booth from 10 to like 10.30 a.m. on Friday, and then at the Angel Competition Bikinis booth from 12.30 to like 1.30. So hopefully I get to see you guys uh, at some point during yeah. the Olympia Expo. That would be so cool. And it would make my day. And it would make it look kind of like I have friends or something. You know? <laughs> so make me look cool, you know. Um, and uh, I might have some freebies at like at the booths, you know, for the meet the athletes. We'll see. I'm trying to get, you know. Trying to, trying to get the people around. Yeah. You know what? I have some stuff. I have some stuff. Um, let's see how many booty bands and stuff I have in the back. So okay. maybe our, our listeners. Okay. Actually, you know what? Let's do that. I will for sure have booty bands. I'll just get them shipped to me from Denver by then if okay. I don't. And this is what we're going to do. So if you're listening to this podcast and you come to Ashley's booth. At the Meet the Athletes. At the Meet the Athletes on Thursday, I will have them in my backpack or Ashley will have them in her bag. And you got to the first thing you got to say to her is... Booty band man. <laughs> what mean, are we going to say? Booty band. Um, so that we something, know it's like a code. Um, Something random. Something super random. You come up with it. What is it? Juice box. Okay. Juice box. Okay. Yeah. Say, so I'm you, reading your, your, your thing. The, the drink. Okay. So he has a juice box flavored energy. So drink. before, bef or no, how about sassy the Sasquatch? Oh, sassy the Sasquatch. I don't know. Okay. So you got to say that before okay. you say hi, my name is whatever. Or hi. Nice to meet you. You're going to say sassy the Sasquatch. And then a, a, a booty band, a magical booty band will appear. Into, and that's how we'll yeah. know you listen to the podcast. That's fun. Yeah. We'll do that. Yeah, we'll do okay, that. Okay, there you go. Yeah, they're like good booty bands too. They're yeah. like $15, $20 booty that's bands. That's yeah. how I got my booty, yeah. basically. It's just the band. <laughs> that's it. I'll be, I'll be floating around um, at I'll the expo floating. there. But I'll be, I'll like be at her Chris, booth most it, of the time. You know, the Chris Angel. It's at the Chris Angel. Yeah, um, oh. Theater, yes. I think, so like that makes <laughs> sense. You float around. That's a boober humor. <laughs> that, that was bad. I need to stop. Hanging around you. You too. I'm rubbing I'm catching, on you in the worst I'm catching ways. your bad humor. Especially, <laughs> I'm suspe especially susceptible at this time where <laughs> where <laughs> my humor gets worse as I get close to a yeah, show because uh, I'm just, uh, I don't have any more. All my energy goes to my glutes right now. Oh, so. that's great. Um, so, oh yeah, one more thing. P should I go to prep house now? Should I talk about it? Oh yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So if you guys have been listening, we have the prep house, right? We're doing the bikini prep house, which is going to be really fun. And I imagine... We're going to have some of those girls on the podcast at some point, right? I mean, imagine. Yeah, so that would be fun. It'd be fun. So um, the cutoff for the first round is already done. So we just finished that up. It was December. We basically finished it up. I put announcements out on, on Instagram and moved it up a little bit because we have to get them here by January. So announcing it on Christmas wouldn't really be feasible for most people. So I put announcements out on that. 
Um, we're going to be voting this week. Remember, it's don't get mad at me if you don't get in. I am just one vote. <laughs> There's many of us voting on it. So um, we're going to launch all the submissions and do that. But what we decided to do, so there's some there's some issues with it. It's not as easy as I thought it would be. Um, but there's some issues with it, like getting pros in. They can only be, if they're a pro trying to get qualified for the Olympia, they can only be in the United States for six months. If they're international. You if they're international. To, yeah, if they're international. mention that part. <laughs> and the ones that I've gotten a lot from are like the international ones. And there's some that are really good that are international. So what we did is we're going to shorten it up and make it like three-month periods or two-month periods, depending on the girls' schedules. Um, but I think the first one we're going to do is a three month period and we're going to mm -hmm. make the first phase all about building muscle. So we're going to push these girls hard as they can. They're going to eat perfectly, work out probably twice a day for five days a week for three months, um, really push their limits, eat perfectly. Like we're going to document the whole thing. Uh, they're all going to do it as like, you know, friends and whatnot. It's going to be fun, you know? Um, and we're going to see how it goes and, and hopefully we get some positive results from it. I'm sure we will. And then, um, but there's not that many shows in the first part, you know, January through March is really not that much going on. Um, so that's going to be building muscle phase. And then we're going to do is we're going to do a second round. Um, if it all goes good, which I think it, it will, thinks, it looks, sounds like everything's going to go smooth. Um, and then the second round will be like com people competing. And that's where international people can compete. And like Canadians have been on, on me. They've been mad at me. They're like, we, well, I want to join that. I want to try. And I'm like, well, you guys can't compete besides North Americans and universe, right? So we're going to make it so it's like that time. So Canadians can also apply and uh, Mexicans too. So um, yeah. Anyway, so that's uh, that's what's going on. So we're going to announce those pretty soon. Serious inquiries only. Yes. It's a big sacrifice. Yeah. Big sacrifice. It's, you know, two to three months, you guys living at the house and kind of, you know, you can work, work from home, as long as you work from a computer. Yeah. Um, yeah. You have to have the right lifestyle for it. Yeah. Basically, that's the thing. You, know? you have to have the, it to be set up perfectly for it. So mm -hmm. no drama. It's not one of those TV shows, but it'll be, it'll be, uh, it'll be fun. And it's going to be just a little bit of vlogging. It's not going to be like a full show or anything like that. But yeah, I'm excited for it. And now that we have the new gym, I'm so excited about the new gym. So we have I know. A, I know. I'm so like. He's I'm, so giddy. I'm so like rejuvenated. So he just can't wait to train glutes. I'm you just know? rejuvenated. I was rejuvenated once, lost it, and then got rejuvenated again. There you go. Rejuvenated. There you so. go. <laughs> wow, there's so, so much great humor in this episode. That was just stating facts. That so. Is <laughs> Ashley's on her. She's almost. She's almost ready for the Olympia. Her, her tolerance to jokes is not, not her normal level. I mean, I just lose. I lose more and more of my sense of humor as we get closer. Because I get. I don't know. I also lose my creativity as well. Do like, you really? Because I'm so focused. Yes. And I'm just like you know got the blinders on. So you do. You know what? That's uh. You. I think you do. You get like more and more like tunneled, right? Yes. As you get closer to the mm -hmm. show. So Ashley, okay. Now that we had our fun. And we got our house, you said housekeeping? Housekeeping. Yes, she said <laughs> housekeeping. So that was our housekeeping, housekeeping. part of the, of the podcast. Done. What? Let's go into the focus stuff. Okay, I would say that you're, you're really good at focus. Um, you're able to maintain sticking to a plan for a long period of time. You're able to maintain focusing on your goal for a really long period of time. Mm -hmm. as, a, as a coach, you're really great. You come in, you get your check-ins done, you're, and there's never been an issue with you missing check-ins or anything weird like that. Like you're always just on it. And how are you able to maintain this? And I don't, here's the thing. When it comes to competitors, like I'm not impressed if you can maintain focus for 16 weeks one time. Yeah. You know, everyone can do that. I did that, right? I want to see when I find excellence and I find someone who's a cream of the crop, it's the person who's maintaining focus for 18 months, right? And so, you know, 16 weeks at a time, you know, I think that you can you can force that if you have a determined goal. But when there's not a goal at the end, when there's like, okay, there's no show in two months, three months, like mm -hmm. when you don't have that deadline, um, how are you how are you able to do this in your life? What are you doing? How are you setting up? Because I think a lot of people, the reason they can't get to being that 18 month person where where they're sticking to it is because they lose focus. And how yeah. do they regain that? And how do they capture that? Yeah, um, that's a great question. So I mean. First off, you know, it's a lot easier when you love what you do. I'm very passionate about what I do. And that very much translates into other things such as like the coaching aspect of it and even photo shoots and stuff like that. So, you know, I, I realize I'm blessed with such a great life and I never take that for granted and I never forget it. So, you know, I think a part of it is just having that gratitude, realizing I live a very special life and a lot of people would love to be in my shoes, I'm sure. And I never want to just, you know, just throw it away for nothing. Um, but also I think, 
I've created a routine for myself and eliminated distractions that aren't benefiting me, right? So I think like in my normal day-to-day life, I live a pretty drama-free life, <laughs> really. I, I'm very, I don't know, I just, I'm like a... I'm doing my own thing, basically, you know, just in in my routine, happy as a clam. um, And I and I don't allow myself to uh, engage with distractions that aren't going to benefit me. Right. So, you know, I just always keep that in mind, though, just like anytime there's temptation to give in. It's just like, is this going to make me feel better in the long run? Is this going to benefit me at the end of the day? Um, or is this something that's going to set me back? Right. So, you know, I, am not saying I don't have fun every once in a while, go out, you know, to restaurants or whatever. Sometimes I do. I usually don't though, because I honestly, I just prefer my, I kind of prefer my routine. I love it. I'm a creature of habit. I love waking up in, uh, in the morning and doing my cardio and coming here and doing this and doing that. I'm, I, I find a lot of joy in that. Um, although it might be mundane to a lot of people, I, I really, I don't know. I just love my routine. It's great. And I think that, you know, when, so it's funny when you talked about this focus topic, um, I started researching it a little bit and like looking into it and um, watching videos and talks and stuff like that on it. And I found, uh, and I, a lot of things were kind of obvious to me, right? Um, and a lot of them were based around a routine, like you said. And it's funny because I was thinking about it and I was like, yeah, Ashley does a lot of this stuff already. Really? And then Ooh. I was thinking, yeah, but well, you're very, you're very routine to person. Yes. You know, you're mm-hmm. like, even for example, and this is not a hit on you or anything like that, but it's like you working out in the evening, you're like, oh, I just don't have the energy for it. Right? I know. But yeah. it's, <laughs> but it's because you've routined yourself in the morning that that's so different for you. Right. Yes. Versus me. Right. Who's not as routine to, you know, I'm routine with a lot of my day, but a lot of my day I'm not. Mm-hmm. So like for me, I'm more, um, I'm more free with my workouts, mm-hmm. but I did a lot better with my workouts when they were only in the morning. Mm. I don't miss them when they're only in the morning at a certain time when it's like, so when I'm not routines and this is a perfect example of it, like I was for months and months working out at, um, like eight thirty nine. I'd see Arthur at the gym sometimes. And then I'd come to the office and then I was like, okay, now, like, I have this going on. We have the equipment being moved in. We have all these, whatever, podcast day today. We're getting ready for the Olympics. So I'm training you today, whatever, right? So I'm like, okay, I'll just, I'll do it at, after I work out. But then it gets to be, you know, seven, eight o'clock sometimes in the office. And I'm like, oh, well, it's only a day off. Like, it's only one day off, right? And then it's like, it's Tuesday and the same thing happens. You're like, okay. And I'm like, I better work out because I had two days off and I freak out after like, mm-hmm. you know, five days. I'm cool with five days. But any less than that, I'll start freaking out. I feel like sloppy. But that wouldn't happen if I would have just stuck to my routine, right? So I think that us having the routine and you like saying, this is my routine is I wake up, I eat my breakfast, I go to the gym, I do this. And I like having it actually systematic. Yeah. It becomes, everything else becomes kind of. Um, it just falls into place better. Yeah. And yeah. it almost seems so strange that you don't even want to do it or feel like you don't have the energy to do it or whatever because it's not your routine. Like yeah. for you going outside okay. your routine is like a lot. And that's always been kind of change and stuff like that's always been kind of like, you know, because you're so routine, but that's not a bad thing. Mm-hmm. And out of all the research that these, you know, why well, wouldn't, I don't even think it's research. It is all the people are giving examples of how to find their focus. And they talk about everyone's losing focus these days. Yeah. And, and a lot of it has to do with our technology and things like mm-hmm. that. The common one between all of the talkers that we're talking about being focused was routine and setting up that routine. And, um, and even Jordan Peterson was talking about putting it in a calendar, like a Google calendar or something like that in your routine and he was saying, you know, when I first talk to people, um, they look at the they look at a calendar like, oh, I just hate working off calendars. And he's like, well, is it really you really hate working off calendars, or is that you think that the calendar is kind of a tyrant to you that you have to stick to? It should be a, a helper to you, to be something that you really look forward to that helps you be better than you were yesterday, mm-hmm. not something that's like a strict boss telling you what to do, which is how you look at it, right? Right. And so, um, and it's funny is that you know you say that and you're a top produ- you're a top pro like the most top pro, right? Most top bikini pro ever. Um, and this was another thing that one time I was at an expo and I was talking to Sean Roden and he talked to, and he won the Olympia, if you guys don't know who he is. And he t- was talking to um, Anya and he was like, and he was, I was like, what's what a word of advice you can give to her as a new pro? And he was like, just stick to your routine. And that was funny because it like, when this came out, it stuck to me. And it was like the best talk. And I was like, I, I was recording it. And then I realized I didn't press record. I was just like pointing the video at him. I was so annoyed. And um, he was saying, you know what? 
when I have to travel, because that year he was Mr. Olympia, he's like, when I have to travel to do guest posings or do expos or whatever, he's like, I could get off the plane and already missed my workout time. He's like, so what I do is I just go right from the airport to the gym. Right. He's like, I never let it, if something messes up my day a little bit, I'll still make sure it's as close to that as I can be. Mm -hmm. He's like, so I wake up, I do this, I do this. And it was like, it was, it was almost like when I first heard it, I was kind of like, okay, this is a lot, Sean. Like he's my buddy. And I was like, okay, Sean, like I get it kind of right. And, but it was like, he was like, at this, I eat this. At this time I eat this. At this, I do this. And I was like, and I was like, okay, Sean, like, you know, cause he's like my homie, you know? And so, um, but then now that I'm like seeing this, okay, wait, he's a, he's like a, you know, uber successive, successful bodybuilder. And he was on this routine where I saw it and I was like, that's a lot, right? Like, I don't need to know all that type of thing, you know? But to him, it was like, no, that's the basics. Like, mm -hmm. that's the, the norm. That's the base level. And that's how you're going to get to where you want to get to. And it was like, and now I'm looking, I look back and I was like, wow, Ashley does that. Sean does that. How many of these other top producers are doing this? And I need to get my Google calendar out. <laughs> and it, like, I'm, in, I'm routine in my way where I get my, my work done. I get my stuff done, you know? But I'm like, man, I could probably be so much more efficient and it would be so much better for my focus because I think that when I'm not sticking to it, I also lose my focus too, mm -hmm. which I don't think it's something that you run into. I often. think I don't lose my focus like completely, but it does fluctuate, you know? Obviously, when I get close to a show, I'm way more focused, kind of like now. I call it being in the zone. Like that home stretch the last like week or so, it's just like, just like we were saying, tunnel vision, just blinders on, nothing's going to get in my way. Food does, doesn't even have a taste right now. It's just fuel. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just whatever, you know? I'm just so focused on the goal. So um, whenever, I, especially like when I'm doing like shows that are back to back to back, I'm so focused. I'm just in in the zone completely like the whole time. But, you know, let's say there is a time where there isn't a show, like kind of this happens every year. That first show of the year doesn't happen till like February. And this is like, oh my God, this is so long of a gap. I, I do get a little bit less focused, but I find that something that really helps me is staying within the mix of the community, right? So I tell people this as well, that are finding trouble with motivation, just being like in the mix and surrounding yourself with that community. So what does that mean? That means coming to Team Elite Physique posing classes. That might mean going to somebody's show that maybe it's not even my show, going to the show, being in the crowd, feeling the atmosphere out. And worst case scenario, watch YouTube videos, right? Just constantly remind yourself of how much you love what you do because, you know, life gets in the way, you get distracted, you got off path a little bit and you just kind of lost the motivation and lost the focus. But just if you constantly have a community or something to go back on or a, an event to attend that has something to do uh, or is relevant to competing or anything you do really, um, it's going to kind of give you that reminder and kind of surround you with the other um, people in your community as well. That's like, okay, I'm, I just got a little boost of motivation just going to maybe a, like a posing class or whatever, you know? So I think that's super important um, to realize. So I definitely would recommend taking advantage of all those seminars that are in your town or, or um, going to somebody's show, even if you're not competing in it, just being in the atmosphere and reminding yourself of, how exciting this is, even though you might not be stepping on stage for months. Who knows? Yeah, that is actually one of the one of the things that's really common amongst um, a lot of people getting into it is just going yeah. to shows and getting in the environment. Um, and you'll always hear judges recommend that to people. They're like, if you want to see what a show is all about and get motivated to like, go to a show, you know. And it's funny that I used to think that was. I used to, it was funny because when I was, you know, coming up in the industry, I used to think it was like something that the promoters would say to sell more tickets, <laughs> you know, I was like, oh, they're just saying it. But then I started talking to people and they're like, yeah, I went to this show and I saw this girl and I, you know, they got like really motivated. It's like a motivating thing for you. And so uh, I think that that's a great tip. And I'm really excited just like for this year, especially coming up with, you know, you're already getting excited about next year talking already. Oh yeah. It's going to be so fun. Of course. But got so many goals for next year. Yeah. What are, do you, are you going to, are you mind saying any of them? Oh Yeah. Let's hear some. I'll tell the world. Because it's focused. So um, <laughs> I think my biggest goal for next year is to compete a lot and piss everyone off. <laughs> <laughs> like it is every year. Yeah. So maybe even more so this time. Yeah. We'll see. Well, it's funny. I really, I really love it. I love it so much. I don't know if it's going to be a thing anymore because I think all the judges have said that you were right and everyone else was wrong. 
And the people who are saying it are competing just as much now and winning shows. That's not time. hypocritical or anything. <laughs> Can you imagine saying that you shouldn't be competing because you're stealing Olympia qualifications and then winning five shows, whatever? Well, that's embarrassing. The next year or two years later, that's like you're stealing. That, that didn't age very well, did <laughs> it? did not age very well at all. No. That's so embarrassing. Yeah. But the, the, so I don't think that's going to, everyone's going to, I think more people now are going to be like, okay, I got to get to that level. I think what's really cool is that you doing that stuff and it becoming so public, right? Which is never going to die, apparently. Because it's funny, it's like it's been dead. It I'm always like, gets brought up. It always gets brought and up. And even if it's not a competitor, it'll be some like loser coach or something. <laughs> some no-name loser coach that wants oh, to. Oh, yeah, that happened recently. Too. Yeah, like that. I, <laughs> apparently, he's salty that um, maybe I beat his athlete or something. I don't know. Yeah, that's Whatever. Great. I'm sorry. There's like, like we always say, there's there's like a, a record number of bikini athletes over 50 or something like that. They're just. I'm not the problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like there's not 50 Ashleys. Yeah. There might, that might be a you issue. Uh, so no. yeah. Um, yeah. Like it's like no pro wins ever. And then he's like, Oh, it's Ashley. <laughs> like, there's a hundreds, there's hundreds of shows. There's, it's not all her, yeah. but um, no, the, I'm excited for that year too. It's going to be really fun. Um, I'm really excited for how everything's lining up right now too. And how you're coming along for the yeah. Olympia too. It looks like you're, you're focused and you're a little bit, you know, you're ahead, oh, I would yeah. say, a little bit right now. You know, yeah. I'm like, I'm so, how do I describe it? When I'm, sometimes when I'm in the zone like this, I'm almost like I block out emotion, which maybe, I don't know if that's good or not. Like, I'm not in my feels. I'm just like getting the job done, whatever. Nothing can piss me off right now. Like, I'm just like yeah. chugging along, you know? I don't know. I am very much like that. So I'm just like, whatever. Got to get the job done. I think everyone has um, a certain degree of that, like, and this is going to, you're not going to probably like, like it, but everyone, everyone has a certain degree of like a warrior in them, uh -huh. you know? And, you know, I, I grew up, you know, I, I tell you, I grew up, you know, boxing gyms and things like that. And like, it's funny how you would see a man change, you know, uh -huh. as they get closer to a fight. And there's a lot of similarities with it in the contest prep world because you're so focused and you're kind of getting ready. Obviously you're not going to be fighting, but it's like, it's just that those, are, it's just, the, it's the most extreme example, you know, because it's so much is at risk with something like that. Like you're, they, you know, they could, they could die in a fight. So like you'd see someone and they're like starting week one of their camp. Right. And they're like, oh, I don't know. Right. And then, um, even, even their podcast with like Joe Rogan, when he's talking to Mike Tyson, you remember that? I don't know if you remember that podcast, but he like got a bigger desk because so he, yeah. So I'll tell you the story. Cause this is just a kind of a good example for prep and why you're so focused and how, okay. how your mentality can change. I think it's, it's relevant if you can, if you can see the two between it. Um, but like, um, it was funny cause Joe Rogan was in a podcast with Mike Tyson and Mike Tyson was being his, like his normal jolly self. He's like a cool guy. He's like totally different now than he was when he was younger. He was like this, you know, he was a savage, you know, Lord of war type of guy, right. Back in the day. And then, um, and then, he was in a pocket, so Joe was like, whatever, right? And then he started getting ready for this fight again. He's, he's, he came out of retirement, like, was going to fight again. And, um, and then the next time he came in, and Joe was, like, just, like, joking with him like normal, and he realized, like, something switched in him because he was getting closer, and he was, like, turning into that guy again. And Joe was like, he's like, he actually, like, scared me. And so that's why this podcast desk is so big because he, like, I was, like, afraid. Like, I, he was too close to him for how, how – for how – much he changed within yeah. that time period. So like, he's got a big, like a wider podcast desk now because of Mike Tyson, because like, he was like, dude, this is like, which Mike is here right now? <laughs> like, and so he, so as he, so I think it's something in the human mind, like as you get closer and closer to that deadline, that warrior kind of comes out. And I don't know if it's just something, some type of like fight or flight thing. Right. And you have a lot of fight in you, you know, and it just becomes out of you. But, um, you know, there's a reason that there's like, the guys at the front of the lines back in the days fighting these wars, you know, and the, the mindset that they had to get from being the family man to that. There's something that happens and it's still in our genetic code, I think, where mm -hmm. when we get closer to a show, like things start changing, you know, intense focus, motions start dying, like everything starts. And then it, it and that's why I think the post-show hangover kind of comes too, is that like, then all of a sudden you're like relaxed again. You're like, <sighs> yeah, it's you know? like, and I feel like sometimes when you are in that state of focus, like you're probably exhausting yourself more than you realize, but you're just running on adrenaline. Yeah. And I think like that post-show hangover feeling afterwards, no alcohol involved. Um, <laughs> it just, it's just like you finally get a chance to like relax and realize, whoa, wait a minute, I'm tired. Oh my gosh, yeah. I feel like crap. Because it just like, it all comes like to you and you don't realize it because you're so focused. But I guess my question for you, Adam, is why would you think 
I wouldn't like that. That was the weirdest well, setup. Like, it's very, it's very. You think I want to attack you? Do you need a bigger <laughs> a gap between me and well, you? Well, what? Yeah, I'm I so bigger. confused. <laughs> no, I just wasn't sure if you'd like the, because the, I'm saying like you're turning into like this, you know, you're more turning monster? into like, yeah, you're a monster. I'm okay. <laughs> you're a bikini monster. Care. You're actually the bikini monster yeah, call monster. I don't care. No, but I could see it though on you too. been it's, called worse. It's a good thing. I could yeah. see it and I know what's I'm happening, monster. you know. Because, you, know, I, I, you <laughs> know, I grew up playing hockey and stuff, too. And it's funny is that everyone's – it's just funny because I could see it happening with you, too. Yeah. And when we would play, like, it's funny how it would change. You know, we would in – the, in, the, um, in the locker room, like, we'd have, like, a, a game where we would know we're going to destroy this team. We're, like, just joking and then and then. And then there was this team we'd play called the Armadillos, right? They were, like – it was, like, our rival. And they were, like, so – it was always, like, okay, we're just going to try to not get hurt in this game. Like, hopefully we all make it out of this game. Yeah. And it was, like – it was just different and – Someone's going to be bloody. Someone's going to be hurt. Someone's like, there's going to be a fight. Like, it's just, it's just, a, this team was tough. And um, they were just as tough as us. And like, we, no one backed down. And it was just always like war, right? And as that week would start coming too, we would be like, it was just, everyone would switch. And it's funny because you could see it. And I don't know what that is, but I, but I'm, I, I wish we can like, I think this episode's a good episode to dive into because as the Olympia is coming, your, uh, your intensity is different, you know, your intensity is different than other shows you've done this year. I mean, oh, you got, yeah. a, you got close to there for the Arnold, right? But I could see it. I could feel it. And it's very, it's all business for you right now. You're like, oh yeah. You're oh, like, especially the Olympia. Yeah. So I always like, I always say this about the Olympia and I don't want people to take it the wrong way. When I think of the Olympia, it's exciting, but I wouldn't consider it like fun, not to laughter. And here's why it's a lot of pressure. It is like the final exam of the year. So there's a lot of pressure to do well. Right. Whereas like maybe if it's not such a, um, a publicized show, it's more like fun. I would say more like, oh, you know, have some goofs some you know, backstage and the backstage for the Olympia. I'm going to be like so quiet. <laughs> it's like so intense, like being on that stage and just knowing that like, oh, the, the next minute or so is going to determine like the whole year of work. So that's where the um, metaphor of the final exam comes in. You can do, well, depending on how the final exam is, um, you can do well all year, but if you fail your final exam, you might fail the class, you know, Where, whereas like it can also work the opposite way. You can kind of fail the whole year, but if you do well on your final exam, you'll do well. So I kind of feel like that, you know, I feel like I had a great year so far. I competed in 11 shows, which is a lot. Not, I wanted to compete more, honestly. Oh, shoot. After Olympia, it'll be 12, but maybe next year I'll compete more. Um, but I feel like I did really well this year. I've made great improvements. So the Olympia is like the final stamp of the year. So it's kind of like you hope it goes well. You hope you bring your best package. But it at the same time, it's such a, a risky thing because if you don't do well, it kind of sours the whole year, even though you did well. And I think that's not just how I think of it. I think that's how the public in general thinks of it. Yeah. No one will remember the shows that you kind of won throughout the year. They'll remember how you did at the Olympia. So I've spoken about the burden of expectation before. You know, that's the only disadvantage of ever winning the Olympia is the burden of expectation. So anything less than a win is, to some people, a disappointment. Now, it took, a, I guess, a few years to get out of that mindset for some people because since I've won, I've also gotten sixth, fifth, fourth, third. So, like, it's kind of, you know, okay, we're, we've accepted that that's not 2015 anymore where I'm like winning it. So I think it kind of still applies though to a third place. So I got third place last year, which I was so excited yeah. about. I feel like if I don't get third place or better, it's kind of like to some people a disappointment. And the way I would describe this as, um, so if I was a rookie that's never competed at the Olympia before and I got, let's say, let's say I got like, even eighth place or something, right? It would be a big deal in a good way. It'd yeah. be like, oh my gosh, this freaking rookie got eighth place. She got top 10. Her first Olympia. That is crazy. That is so, congrats, right? But if I were to get like eighth place, 
after previously winning it, it'd be like, oh, gosh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, that sucks, you know? And and I'd get, like, the pity, like, oh, I'm Ashley, I'm sorry. Like, even though maybe, you don't know, maybe I would like that. Well, not eighth, but, like, this has happened before when I've gotten, like, fifth and stuff, too. Like, it's kind of like, oh, gosh, Ashley, you know, you got fifth place. That sucks. I'm sorry. And I remember when I got fifth place in, what was it, 2018? Mm-hmm. I was actually... I was happy. I was like, oh, my God. I made great improvements. I thought I did really well, you know. And then it kind of, when other people kind of make it sound like it's disappointed, it kind of brings down your happiness a little bit because it's like, oh, well, geez, I mean, <laughs> I thought I did good. I took a year off, and the sport's getting harder every year. And it, and it kind of, like, dampens your happiness a little bit so it's kind of like you know just getting away from that mindset and it's kind of like you have to you know just convince yourself hey no I'm hey listen if you're proud of the package you brought and you don't think you could have done anything better then you got to take that as your own personal win I guess you know that sounds super corny but at, for real if, if there's nothing better you could have done and you feel like you give it your 110 percent there's no way you can be mad at that. So it's like, you know, trying to kind of express these feelings can come across as like I'm being pessimistic, I guess, or yeah. not that I think I'm going to do bad. That's I don't think I'm going to do bad. I think we're going to bring a great package. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, I am I'm only in control of one thing, and that's me. So I can't control how it's judged. I can't control how the other girls look, who shows up, how they show up. Right. So there's no, I guess you can't play defense in the sport. It's all just you. So if I'm happy about what I brought and I'm confident and I'm like, yeah, there's not much we could have done better, then I got to be happy with it. So hopefully that puts me in that top call up. We'll see. That would be great. Um, But I got to realize too, hey, sport gets harder every single year. This year's crazy. Every year gets so much harder. So it's not that I'm getting worse. It's <laughs> that the talent pool is getting deeper and deeper and bigger deeper. And, bigger, yeah. and I mean, geez, this is a record number 58 of... 58 or 57, something like that. Too much is what I say. Yes. Uh, <laughs> there's a record number of girls and they're all looking fantastic. And I, I know you've made the statement before too, like top 10 can be switched around and oh, probably easily. wouldn't, you wouldn't have any pushback with it really No, because there'd be an argument for each if you get the top 10 you can put each one of them like i honestly you could probably put each one in first place that might be a little stretch but you could probably put each one in first place and then be like this is why and then everyone would probably like oh okay i get what they were thinking like i don't think anyone would argue it because it's bikini you know yeah it's so much different than bodybuilding bodybuilding is like there's no way like 10th place will never beat first place it just wouldn't it's not possible right but but in In bikini bikini, it's like so um diverse and subjective yeah right so like in bikini there is no like those those limits or there's no like how do i say it it's an art form like you always describe so like in bikini you can easily be too lean for their liking you can easily be too soft for their liking you can be too muscular you can not be muscular enough so there's a lot of like you got to be in the middle 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 of the middle is you know what I mean so for every person it's going to be different it's going to look a little different right so for maybe me I look better leaner and that's what the judges like me as whereas somebody else can get away with being a little softer so you really have to like have such a precise eye to come in the best you can personally and you know like I said that's the only thing you can control is you so you just you just got to hope the other girls that show up aren't way more muscular and way leaner than you or way softer and you know so you kind of want to ideally kind of float in that middle um of being uh, of of muscle uh amount and leanness right because you don't want to show up being the leanest you don't want to show up being the softest you don't want to show up being the most muscular or the one that doesn't have enough muscle so it's a lot of like you know a little uh, great area to navigate. So bikini's tough. Yeah, bikini's, bikini's tough. tough. It is. It's tough, and it takes a lot. Of, and I, 
I did a I did a, my prediction video on it too. I, I know saw I saw. It. Well, I didn't. I saw you posted it. I didn't watch it. Yeah, I'm I was like, like, I don't want it in my head. Yeah, well, I'm not. I'm probably not going to watch yeah, it until no, after that's Olympia. Fine, no. No, I've actually mentioned it in it. I'm like, I'm not going to put the pressure on her. So yeah, anyway, I'm not going to yeah. tell you too much about okay, it. Okay, okay. <laughs> but the uh, yeah. So and, and it's funny because I give like arguments for everything, and I'm like, in the whole video, I'm like. This could be totally wrong. <laughs> I actually put out in the video, I said, if you if anyone could nail top 10 in a row, I'll give them $2,500. It's been like 130 people have like voted so far. Um, all right, so what did I say? Did I say $2,500 for a top 10 in a row? Because it's like, if you did that, I don't know who could, I mean, it's just pure luck, you know, to do that. Because I gave my educated analysis and I still think I'm going to be way off. Like at the end of it, I think it's going to be like, Dude, he was way all over the place. Like, and then you have your, uh, you know, you have your 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 sneaker snipers that are like no one really knows. And sneaker overseas. snipers. Yeah, the snipers that come in and they just. This is some boomer humor again. <laughs> That's like there's, he's sneaky, there's sneaky, sneaky snipe, you sniper. Said sneaker. Yeah, like sneakers. Like they're shoes. Sneak, like sneaky, like a like they're sneaking in and then they snipe and win the whole thing. You know, or <laughs> snipe and get top ten or whatever. You sniper, know what I mean? No sniper, no there's, there's people in uh, like. There's there's a few, you know, there's people we just don't know how they look yep. compared to next to everyone. And you they don't know. Over here yet, you yeah, know? and and as the sport always evolves, you know, maybe they're looking for something a little bit different to kind of set the standard for next year too. Yeah. It's all so up in the air. And then and then they reduced our opposing time to 45 seconds, which is good for me, but that might throw off some people as well. Oh yeah, totally. You it changes I mean? changes the presentation, it changes yeah. everything. So yeah, it's a it's it's an exciting one. It's a it's a it different. It is. It's always exciting, but geez, it just gets yeah. so much tougher every single year. It's like oh, oh goodness. So, so you know, um, back into like your focus. What what shifts for you? Is it just the? Is it does it is just kind of naturally it shifts for you for this show, or is there steps that you're taking where your mentality gets to this stage where you're so tunnel visioned on it? Because you know? something's shifting. I think like the more hype about it, it reminds you more every time, right? Like there's not a minute I don't think about the Olympia right at, at this point because <laughs> it's in my face everywhere. Um, but it's crazy because I feel like my body very much knows what's going on. It cooperates <laughs> and it saves the day at the last minute at sometimes, but it just like knows what to do at this point. Um, so I don't know if that's led by my body or my mind i'm not sure i don't ask too many questions but it works <laughs> for me whoever is doing it whoever's doing it thank you you know whether that be my body or my mind i don't know but i'm appreciative of it uh but you know i'm human and like i mentioned sometimes i do lose a little focus but certainly not right now that's for sure now is not the time to lose focus i think you know there's been times where i've gotten in my head a little too much at the bigger shows like this one where I just kind of psych myself out. And I don't know if that's considered losing focus necessarily, but it definitely made it more difficult to get in the zone. I will say that because I'm just like, oh, you know, a little too pessimistic at times. I try to be very realistic. And, you know, I know you're way more optimistic than me, whereas I'm more like realistic, I think, in my personal opinion. But, you know, maybe I should be a little more optimistic, maybe be more like you. Yeah, I don't know. I'm I, very much like, well, according to the stats, you yeah. know, according to the stats, I mean, technically, this girl, she would be more ha, has a more of a chance to win than this. Yeah, so, like if it was bodybuilding, I'd be that way. Yeah, because it's easy to analyze. But bikini is the has the variables, you know, mm -hmm. it has the variables, so it it's does. it's different. You know, you can't yes. really go off of stats on on something like that. You know, it's it's because it's you know, it's subjective. It's art. How, you, how does this art look this day? There's a lot of weird ones this week, but yeah, that is something I think that, uh, you know, one day, I, well, maybe, maybe when you finally like, maybe one day, I don't know how I'm going to look at it. Maybe one, maybe one day, maybe one day you'll like, you'll do something and you'll be like, maybe when you get to like 40 wins or something, you'll step back and you'll be like, I am the most dominant bikini competitor there ever was like I am that girl like and like own it and then that I would like that <laughs> because you don't you don't act like it but you are that you know what I mean like you see you'll see you know Connor Connor McGregor win a fight or something you know and he's like he's can like, I do the little walk when I walk <laughs> Connor out? McGregor walking he was like <laughs> but that mentality you know kept him there for so yeah. long like because he actually thought he was you know he thought he was God's gift you know he was like so like and I don't you know you wouldn't want to be arrogant but but um but 
knowing where you're at, you know, you are the most successful bikini pro and the most successful pro. And, and it w you immediately jump, oh, bodybuilding harder. <laughs> but that is something, you know, that is, I think that would be a good area for you and to, to like own it. And I think I understand humility is a good thing, but yeah. Well, that, you know, that, that goes also, you know, you mentioned that MMA is what he does. See, that's another thing where he's more in control of the outcome because yeah, he can true. defend and take guess, down another person. Whereas, you know, in bikini, you know, you might you might hit a little elbow here and there by mistake, but <laughs> you know, you're only in control of yourself. So that's, that's true. the only thing you can control is yourself on that day, and you can't. Con there's no mind games you can play with people. There's no defense i can't touch anyone <laughs> i can't karate chop anyone people tried to mind game you before really <laughs> well i'm just saying the the girls that were saying you shouldn't be competing oh. <laughs> that didn't work so no, well no oh god that no <laughs> I, that actually motivates me more yeah um so i like that uh, <laughs> but you know so but i you know for right now i feel pretty calm for for what it is which yeah. is actually a good thing i feel pretty calm i feel like we're on pace we're we're where we need to be for right now, and we still got another week and a half. So you know, yeah, little changes here and there, nothing too drastic. But I think I'm in a good spot. Yeah, I think so. And are. um, I'm just I'm just sad that there's no shows after Olympia. You know, not till like February. I know because it's like shoot, if I I'm the one that I like. I think like if I'm getting in shape, I might as well do a run of shows. And it's like ah, this one's kind of like stranded out there in in an island. The Olympia is just not around any other shows. Well, no matter what happens this year at the Olympia, Ashley, I'm proud of you. And Thank I do, you. I do think, um, no matter what happens, you know, even worst case scenario, I don't think people will think that, uh, wasn't good on the finals. End. Cause you did win the Arnold UK this year. You that won some big, show. you won some big shows this year. And, um, I mean, that's, they don't get much bigger than the Arnold, you know, the Arnold UK. So like, you know, let's, let's, uh, let's call that what it is. So, um, either way you had a good year, you know, yeah. but, but, uh, yeah, let's hope, hope to kick some butt. Heck yeah. so, so as far as, um, you know, on the, the topic of focus in terms of scheduling anything, do you ever do any of that stuff? Do you in your schedule or is it just so like in advance? Your... I am a, more of a planner than you, I think. Oh, definitely. For sure. Um, I do like to plan. <laughs> I'm the one that will book flights like months upon months in advance Adam waits till like the day before. I'm terrible, yeah. But I do, <laughs> and I think that's good for me because I can I can kind of visualize it a little more. It's like a real thing. Um, but I I do I'm very organized when it comes to planning and and events and and, and events going on in my life. But it's funny because I'm very disorganized in real life with items like you know my house, my room. I'm not like I'm not. How do I say it? I'm disorganized. I'm not like messy though. It's not like I have like food spoiling on the table. No, I'm clean, but like I am bit, sometimes I can be very like items kind of, I don't put them away in the right spot or leave drawers open. So it's funny contrast, but yeah, I guess that's the way I do it. How, how about you? Um, you know, I'm very, it's funny in my, my regular life. I'm, I would say I'm okay. I'm very, you know, I wing it. I'm very day by day, but in my, my work, you know, I'm very regimented on my work. And mm -hmm. it's, um, that's something that I wish I got, I didn't apply more of that to my regular life, but it's funny because the same thing with like flights and whatnot, like, like Kimber's like, what are we going to do for this? And I'm like, I don't know. It's three months away. Like two months away. <laughs> like I'm a book at a flight. What if there's something going on at the gym? What if there's this going on? What if someone's competing? Whatever, you know? So I'm like, I never really book anything in advance because all the variables in my life. Um, so I've just gotten a kind of accustomed because of those variables. I've gotten, kind of, I've kind of gotten accustomed to just, living it like day by day outside of work inside mm -hmm. of work. I'm like, okay, I know, you know, when I'm in the office Monday through Wednesday, I got this Monday, I got my podcast. I got my workouts here, like sessions here, whatever. And, um, that's all like in my head scheduled, but my outside of work stuff is a little bit like, um, not, not as organized as it should be. Even like Kimber's always like, she's like, you're like the most successful, like disorganized person. I know. <laughs> like, like, like I've ever met. And I'm like, yeah, it's very day by day on, on the other things, but the, the work stuff, I'm like, perfect on you know yeah like so which is which is really funny <laughs> it's funny because uh, this topic when i was sort of researching and watching the videos on and stuff and like the things that were saying like how people got distracted i was like oh yeah i do that <laughs> like oh yeah i do that you know yeah. and it's like all these little things these little tips of learning like, like one was like just having your so like when i do emails in here i'll listen i try to keep up on like the bodybuilding stuff mm -hmm. so when i do my emails in the morning when i first get in that's the first thing i do is all the emails and then i do my check-ins 
And um, <clears throat> with the emails, I'll like play YouTube in the background, like the bodybuilding YouTube stuff. But then it leads to like me watching other videos. And then if it's a good video, then it delays me from getting to like a check-in or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, and I'm like, wait a minute. And then it's like, you've been watching YouTube for an hour and you're like, wait a minute, that was just like one video. And like, it just keeps going, but it's just, uh, they were talking about it and they're talking about like TikTok and how it's distracting our youth and their attention spans are significantly lower. And they, they took away all social media from them for a week period. And all of a sudden their focus was highly more, it was like a lot more, um, I guess it would be, it would be greater than it was. Yeah. Right. So, um, it was funny cause I was like just watching all these habits that people have on focus and how many of them that I fall into too. And being, you know, I guess you'd say, um, in my world, I got a lot going on that's dependent on me being efficient. It's, uh, it's surprising that even like how much of that would be, I would take part in too. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, it's just like, I think it's, it's one of the things I need to do when I've learned in this too, I do need to put time schedules in, become more efficient, make the most of my day. And I think that that's really what, you know, the focus became as at the, at the end of things, the sum of things was that focus was did you do more and are you better today than you were yesterday by just a little bit? You know, are you having a hard time doing your cardio? Well, maybe you schedule your cardio before you work out because you never have a hard time doing it before, you know, you, you have mm -hmm. a hard time doing it after you just want to leave. Um, and then one day you do 10 minutes of cardio. Then the next day you do 12 minutes of cardio. The next day you do 14, right? To get it up. And then it becomes part of your routine. And then everything was just forced doing it by way of schedule until it becomes very routine where you don't know a way out of doing it. Right. Just like when I was working out at 9 a.m., like if I worked, if it was like 1030, I'd get anxious. I'd be like, oh, I haven't missed my workout already. Like, I got to get to the gym. Like, get, like, anxious, right? Now, that went away. And now I'm like, oh, I'll just work out. And then I'm at, at the gym at 8 o'clock at night. And I'm like, this workout sucks because I'm tired, right? So the benefits there of actually mm -hmm. having the schedule versus the, you know, the halfway workout, the half yeah. intense workout, right? So That's another thing, too, is, like, I think with focus, procrastination is is it's going to be your enemy. I try not to procrastinate. And I think that might be why I'm such a morning person because it does linger in my mind too. It's like, not only does my energy dip, you know, the later in the day, but like it's in my mind, like I still got to work out, still got to work out, still got to work out, still got to work out. And then it just feels like I'm going through the motions just to say I worked out if I wait too long, you know? So I think it's important to realize what times are best for you. Um, Cause we're all different, right? Some people are night owls. Some people are, morning birds like myself but uh regardless don't procrastinate i think like if you find yourself procrastinating just take like i know it sounds like so cheesy just like count to like five and be like no i'm doing it nope no ifs ands or buts don't let the other side of you overtake like your reasoning right yeah. just do it just go for it don't think about how tired you are don't think about how it's you'd rather do something else just do it I even made like a post the other day that sometimes the hardest part about going to the gym or sometimes the hardest part about a workout is just getting to the gym, honestly. And I think that applies to many different things. It's like just the buildup in your mind of like, oh man, I don't want to do it. Or, I'd rather do this. I kind of feel like tired today. But then once you're there and you're in your environment and doing your thing, it's like, okay, that wasn't that bad. Yeah. It's just you kind of concocted it to be much worse in your mind. So yeah, just keep that in mind. Sometimes the hardest part about a workout is just getting to the gym. I think that's, um, we talked about it a, a few times before, but the voice in the head, right? Yeah. And like, I've had that guy come up pretty, pretty often here, you know, and w especially when I'm like remodeling this gym or whatever. And it's always about the workouts. That's when he comes up is the workouts. Yeah. And that guy starts talking and he starts saying, ah, uh, you don't need to work out today. You worked out, you know, you've worked out four days in a row. You could skip today. You've already moved the gym equipment. Like I was on Saturday. Like you moved the gym equipment around all day because I was moving the equipment outside and cleaning and I was tired. And then the guy got louder and louder and louder. And then I was like, you know, you have to step back and be like, hey guy, shut up. I'm doing my workout. <laughs> you know, and after like, after a couple sets, you're, you're in the zone. You need to turn the music up. Uh -huh. And another thing I've learned too, like in the gym is that when I have good music on, my intensity and my focus is so much better, but sometimes I'll play YouTube or I'll like try to multitask and I'll like look at an email or something like that while I'm in between sets. I'm like, Oh, I'll be efficient. And I'll look at an email in between sets and just get it done. And then my workouts suck. Yeah. You know? So I've learned, okay, put the phone in your pocket, press play and don't pick it up. Just mm -hmm. put the phone in your pocket. Right. And, um, and, and press play. And so that's, that helps me too. When I'm, especially when I'm doing like, um, 
like a, if I'm doing like a, a circuit or something like mm-hmm. that too, um, it helps a lot. You know, I'm the opposite. I actually find that music can be distracting when I work out. Isn't that weird that you're like that? <laughs> yeah, it's a good distraction though when I'm doing cardio because when I'm doing like, let's say I'm on the treadmill, elliptical, whatever, I don't want to think about it. I want like music or YouTube to distract me because the machine's doing the thinking. Like it's, you set it to a level and you stay on it for this amount of time. It does the thinking. But when I'm working out, I like to focus on the feeling of my muscles. But for whatever reason, like background music doesn't bother me. Like the music we play here doesn't bother me. But if I have it in my earphones, it's like the only thing I can hear. It's like I can't concentrate on the feeling of my lifts. I do better, honestly, when I train with somebody or somebody's training me. <laughs> I Like I mentioned in the other podcast, it's like my weakness is I I need like a babysitter in the gym sometimes, I feel like, because I'll just like let time pass and like, oh, wow, I just rested for five minutes without realizing, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> so that's always helpful. But um, going back to what you were saying, like the voice inside your head, I, this is why I try never to break commitments. If I commit to something, I, I rarely break it because I don't want that to become a habit. So I'm one of those people, if I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. Even if I don't want to, if I've committed to it, because I don't want to get into the habit of being flaky and you can even be flaky on yourself too. Like, yeah, I'll go to the gym tomorrow. And then tomorrow comes and you're just like, "Eh, never mind. No. If I told myself I'm going to the gym tomorrow, I'm going to the gym tomorrow. If I told Adam I'm going to do this and this and this, I'm going to do it, even if I don't feel like it, because I don't want to get in the habit of letting that voice inside my head win. That voice inside my head isn't going to win. No. <laughs> no. If I say I'm going to do something, do it. Well, there you go. There you go. <laughs> well, um, with that, Ashley, this is our last podcast before the Olympia. Yeah, yeah. and we'll do Olympia recap after, yes. the, the m- Monday after, where I'm nice and tan and and shredded <laughs> well ashley i think uh, i'll speak for everyone that watches our podcast but everyone's proud of you this year as thank well as that as am well, i thank you yeah you're your inspiration to everyone every year that you compete oh, and uh, i think it's great that you're you're changing the way we think about prep and i think that that's that i think if anything because i know the wins are cool but it's not really anything you focus on right. you know it just kind of comes with it and it's but what your legacy is going to be and what's going to be it's going to bridge to my legacy too is going to be um, how often you competed and how you showed that, Hey, you can do this. It doesn't need to suck the whole time. Mm -hmm. And it's in that you can do it all the time and you can maintain a lean physique. You don't need to do just one show a year. This can be um, for fun, a hobby for work, for everything. And um, I think that it's, it's forced people to, take a step back because five years ago, people weren't talking about competing all the time. They weren't competing as often as they are now. And you've set the trend for that. And you're seeing mm-hmm. other people, even people who hated on you for competing so much are competing just as much now, mm-hmm. right? That just shows the effect that you're having on it. And um, it started, that started, you know, with you, um, you know, way back in the day they did it. Yes. But you like, kind of started it in bikini, right? You know, you had the, the Kevry Lavarnes and the, the, sh- uh, the, the Flex Lewis, what is it? Flex Lewis? What am I saying? Flex Lewis. I'm getting Flex uh, <laughs> uh, all the, the other, the two flexes next up. Um, but you know, they competed all the time, but, um, you know, Milos or he competed like 72 times or something. Right. So, but no one was doing it in bikini and it kind of died, you know, it kind of died for a while. The one time Olympia competitor kind of, that's what happened. It started being, Oh, I won the Olympia. I'm going to compete once at the Olympia, maybe the Arnold, right. That kind of became the thing. And, um, I think that it's really cool that you've shown that. And I think it inspires a lot of girls to, to say, okay, how is she doing that? And why can't I, if she's able to compete and look like that all year, why can't I look somewhat fit all year? Why am I going and gaining 30 pounds after a show and then getting looking good only one time of the year and then trying to capture that back again the next time I compete the next year? If Ashley can maintain doing 14 shows a year, how come I can't just kind of stay lean, right? And so it's cool. It's made people think, you know, and it's made people think and it's made nutrition um, experts who call themselves experts that, you know, in the nutrition world that don't understand the contest prep world, really take a step back and be like, okay, um, I said you couldn't do it before, but obviously you you can because there's the data right there. And it's like, you either turn a blind eye to that data and pretend that it doesn't happen, or you can accept that and use that as a real case study and be like, okay, you can do this for a longer period of time. You can maintain a leaner physique. So now it's like, okay, we've seen you do it. 
Now, how do I do it? How does it work mm-hmm. for me, right? How does it make me improve the next year? So that is going to be the biggest thing you leave here. And uh, I hope you do it for many, many more years. And, oh, yeah, uh, I'm just getting started. Yeah, exactly. I, that's my catchphrase for the past few years. I'm just getting yeah. started. But, but, yeah, that's, I mean, that is my main thing I want to portray with what I'm doing is, like, this can be fun. I think a lot of people think of fitness and they correlate that with misery prep equals misery it doesn't have to suck (laughs) it doesn't it's difficult yes but anything worth having is going to be difficult right um so yeah i just want to show that hey i'm out here literally living my best life no complaints i'm having so much fun and you can have so much fun too you can continue to improve throughout um and uh don't let anybody tell you uh, what shows to do, what shows not to do. You're competing too much, not competing enough. You do what you want, what makes you happy, go with the flow. And, uh, yeah, I'm uh, like, I, I always say, I, I realize I'm in a very unique and special position with my life. I have like the perfect life to do this, the perfect lifestyle in the perfect location with the perfect coach and the perfect sponsors. And it all lines up. So I'm going to take advantage of my time here. And, um, I'm, yeah, it's, a lot of fun, yeah. a lot of fun, this whole process. So hopefully we see more improvements and, you know, just like last or next year too, is like, you know, not only do I want to compete a lot, but I want to make those improvements. So I'm sure we can do it. We can look even better next year. Um, and I guess this Olympia will be a little taste test, a little, a little sample. Yeah. How I'm going to look. So I think when I did win the Arnold UK, it gave me some confidence not that not necessarily because I won which was great I you know for sure but more so that I saw improvements in my physique and you know I've been competing for like 10 years so to see improvements isn't the easiest sometimes especially when you compete so frequently right because when you compete so frequently you you see your your physique progress at a much slower rate because you're always testing yourself, right? You're always testing yourself. Just like if you do a physique check every day, you're not going to notice little changes versus if you do a physique check once a month, you might see bigger changes because more time in between. So to see my physique at the Arnold UK, I was like, whoa, I made some major improvements. And I'm, it's like, confidence that like, whoa, I'm not done yet. I'm getting, I'm just getting started. I can look even better. It's not, I'm not anywhere close to being at my peak. So there's still a lot of juice left in me. Yeah. There's definitely still some room in there and you can see it it definitely. It's funny as I I put side by side your pictures of last year's Olympia and the Arnold UK, just to look at like how much has she actually like grown in her shoulders and stuff? Is it just an illusion? And it was just like how I just looked like it a little bit, you know? And, um, when I put them side by side, I was like, like, oh, wow, it's actually quite apparent. I think like Arthur did the edit and even saw it too. in the, in the shoulders when it was, it was like looking at, it. I was like, you see this, right? And so, um, yeah, you've definitely improved a lot. And that's with, with you going through, you know, competing so much and doing mm-hmm. it while you compete. So I'm, I'm really happy that you do that because it's so cool to see that people are like, you know, picking that up and it's just so cool to that, to, to watch it and be part of it. And sometimes I got to like step back and be like, okay, like, we're doing this and it's so cool, you know? Like, it is cool. We have some cool lives. It's so cool to see, you know? It's yeah. like so, it's so, you know, it's just cool. It's just fun to it like, is. like, it's almost like it's a, it's, and it doesn't, I don't know. Like I would, if this was just like a show, I would watch it, you know? Mm-hmm. Like it was just like a TV show. I'd be like, I want to watch that. Yeah. It's just cool to see, you know? It's a cool thing to see and it's a cool real life human experience, you know? Yeah. Like, and so. I feel like Cinderella sometimes, honestly. Like I wouldn't change my life for anyone's I don't care like if somebody makes more money than me cool but I get and look what I get to do like yeah. this is so much fun to me and like I mentioned I have like the perfect lifestyle to do so if I like hypothetically if there was like a show in freaking Japan this weekend I could technically be like yeah okay let's go <laughs> like nothing is holding me back yeah. like I have great sponsors that take care of travel and accommodations and you as a coach it's been super supportive and helped me and and just everything is just, I have a great life. So I never want to uh, let that time pass where I could be like competing and having the time of my life. It's, it's, I'm, I'm very happy now. I'm in my life right now. And 
and just continue all the good memories yeah. to last a lifetime. I want to so. give one more shout out. Shout out, shout out to Hugo for being awesome. Oh, Hugo, boyfriend. yeah. So I'm just gonna do it. All, oh, yeah, because yeah. like. I mean, you compete a lot. It's hard. Yeah, he you deals like, with my crankiness. You get the sometimes. cranks, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's so, very calm. Yeah. Shout out to him, man. Yeah. Shout out to him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, anyway, guys, thanks so much. It's a fun one. This is always fun at the end of the, the end of the, it's kind of like, a, even though we don't have like an end to our podcast, it's kind of yeah. like an end of our season too, right? We kind of do this like. That's the final exam, the, Adam. The, the final the exam. Before the interview, kind of do these like final ones. Yeah. Let's see if I pass the final exam. You already passed the final exam. You, I didn't no, we'll I mean, see. We'll see at the. We'll see at the show if I pass my final exam <laughs> yeah. for the year, and if I pass the year, we'll see. Yeah. Um, but I think anyone who's listening to this, no matter what you do, you're going to pass. Yeah. 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 Yeah